Let's do some quick math. A commercial airplane can fly at 575 miles per hour. Our rockets fly into space at 26,400 miles per hour. But this asteroid breaks all records and zooms at 33,000 miles per hour. That's 43 times faster than the speed of sound. At that speed, you could cross the Atlantic Ocean in just 5 minutes. The worst part is that this thing could crash into the Earth. This is asteroid 2021 RX-9. It's 120 feet wide. That makes it one-third the size of a football field. It was only recently discovered, and scientists were able to calculate its orbit. It's not round like most planets. It's an ellipse, like if you squeezed a donut a little bit. RX-9 begins its journey toward the center of the solar system, about 273 million miles from the Sun. It crosses the asteroid belt, then the orbit of Mars and the orbit of Earth. It makes a circle around our star and then shoots back like a slingshot. The asteroid will move away from the Sun until the star's gravity forces it to begin its return journey. RX-9 makes one such round trip in two and a half Earth years. Although the orbit of this asteroid intersects with that of our planet, it's not dangerous to us. The closest it'll get to Earth is 7.5 Earth-Moon distances. But there are many other asteroids in space. RX-9 could collide with them and change its trajectory. Uh-oh. And that could put it on the list of potentially hazardous asteroids. And this thing is asteroid 2021 NY1, and it's already on the list. It's as big as two Statues of Liberty, and it's moving through space at 6 miles per second. So this asteroid could take you to the moon in just 11 hours. Its orbit is also elliptical. Its far point lies somewhere between the asteroid belt and Jupiter, at 3.9 Earth-Sun distances. The closest point of its orbit to the Sun is right near the Earth's orbit. Asteroid NY1 has passed Earth at only 4 Earth-Moon distances. It'll make a circle around the Sun and head back to its starting position. The asteroid makes a complete orbit in almost 4 Earth years. The record for the closest approach to Earth belongs to asteroid 2020 VT4. It's a rock the size of a bus, and it flew at an altitude of 230 miles above Earth. For comparison, the International Space Station orbits our planet at 250 miles. So it literally flew over our heads in the region of the South Pacific Ocean. And we didn't even know this asteroid existed. It flew over the Earth at daytime, and we couldn't see it because of the sun's light. Scientists only learned about this asteroid 15 hours later. If it had fallen on Earth, well, let's say we could have had a very bad day. Although this asteroid was small, it was moving extremely fast. That gave it a tremendous amount of energy. But we have a shield that protects us from space rocks, our atmosphere. It's full of air particles. So when an asteroid enters our atmosphere, it begins to break against these particles because of friction. This heats up the asteroid so much that it begins to burn. This is the reason why the bottoms of our space shuttles were protected with black tiles. They could withstand temperatures up to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. So if an asteroid is small, it could burn up completely in the atmosphere and turn to dust. If you look at it from Earth, it would look like a falling star. Scientists believe that any asteroid under 80 feet in diameter will burn up completely in the atmosphere and cause no harm. But an asteroid larger than 1.5 miles can do a lot of damage. And we know of such an asteroid that regularly passes by our planet. 4179 Teutatis. It's 3 and a third miles wide, so it's bigger than Central Park in New York. And if you put this rock on scales, well, it'll show 5 plus 11 zeros tons. That's heavy. The most frightening thing is that this asteroid moves in a chaotic orbit because it's constantly being affected by Earth and Jupiter. It's like the planets are playing ping pong with this giant rock. It also causes the asteroid to rotate like crazy. If you were on the surface of Teutatis, you would see that our sun constantly rises and sets in completely different places. Because of this chaos, scientists can only predict the movement of this asteroid 50 years in advance. In 2004, it came within four Earth-Moon distances from our planet. Fortunately, there's a chance that one day, it'll leave our solar system. Jupiter or Earth will launch it into distant space like a slingshot. But if it did fall to Earth, it would cause gigantic tsunamis and earthquakes all over the planet. Then the existence of our civilization would be in question. A similar catastrophe happened about 66 million years ago. 
At that time, I wasn't around then, but I heard about it. An asteroid the size of Manhattan flew toward Earth. The sun heated its surface and vaporized the material from it. The dust and steam turned into a giant tail that glowed brightly in the night sky. The night before it fell, it was the brightest object in the sky, perhaps even brighter than the moon. The moment this asteroid entered Earth's atmosphere, it caused a popping noise so powerful that you could hear it on the other side of our planet. It began to burn. Small fragments began to fall from the main body of the meteorite. Some of them burned up completely in the atmosphere, but others fell to the surface. The moment of impact. The mass and speed of the meteorite gave a colossal energy of about 100 teratons in TNT equivalent. That's a big boom. All this energy turned into heat. It was literally a wall of fire that spread around the impact site and burned everything in its path. The blast wave from the touchdown circled our planet several times. It caused a tsunami with waves higher than the Empire State Building and earthquakes so strong that the ground literally cracked. After this incident, about 95% of all life on Earth ceased to exist. The meteor left behind a crater as wide as 66 Golden Gate Bridges, and it was so deep you could stick two Mount Everests in there. And there are still many objects in the asteroid belt behind Mars that pose a threat to Earth. Like Ceres, it's not just any asteroid, it's a dwarf planet. Although it has a mass of only 1% of that of the Moon and is as wide as Texas, yeehaw, it gravitationally affects the orbits of Earth and Mars. A collision with an asteroid of that size would simply destroy the Earth, tearing it to pieces. So, humanity must learn how to avoid colliding with dangerous asteroids. Here, we have two options. Destroy the asteroid or make it change its trajectory and fly past Earth. Destroying a huge rock that weighs as much as an entire city is difficult. So, we stick with the second option. We can send a spaceship with explosive there and then do a little boom. Only, we don't have to drill a hole to plant this present inside the asteroid. The boom has to be right above the surface and pointing upwards. Then, according to the law of physics, the asteroid will shift down a little bit. Even if the asteroid moves only a few feet, on a cosmic scale, this would dramatically change its trajectory. Another option is a gravity tractor. The principle is simple. Any object that has mass also has gravity. Even you. Yes, you have your own gravitational force. So our plan is to send an unmanned spacecraft to the space rock. It would just have to hover over the surface of the asteroid. Then the space rock will attract the spacecraft, but the craft's engines will resist. As a result, the asteroid itself will start pulling toward the spacecraft. Voila! Earth is saved! We can also use solar power. All we have to do is build a giant space station out of thousands of magnifying lenses and send it to the sun. When we spot a dangerous asteroid, the station will focus the sun's rays on the surface of the asteroid. The ice from its surface will begin to evaporate and move upward. The reactive force will push the asteroid down. Or deliver a giant cloak of shiny material like foil to the asteroid. If you wrap the asteroid in such material, it'll reflect the sun's rays. Again, the rays are reflected one way and push the asteroid slightly the other way. This method can only work if we have a few years to spare before the asteroid arrives. Another strategy is to attach a solar sail to the asteroid. It would work like a parachute, only it won't be breaking against the air, but against the sun's rays. And the simplest option? We could attach conventional rocket engines to the asteroid. Then we can not only change the trajectory of its flight, but also control it. And if a big asteroid appears on the horizon, we can use the controlled space rock as a giant ram. The legend of the Black Knight satellite tells us that a spaceship of extraterrestrial origin has been orbiting Earth for many, many years. Sounds crazy, right? But over the years, the supporters of the theory have gathered a lot of evidence to prove it. So let's look at it and judge for ourselves. 1899. Famous scientist Nikola Tesla built a giant tower in his laboratory in Colorado Springs. This tower was supposed to allow him to study atmospheric electricity and wireless energy. Everything went fine until one day he discovered something unexpected. The tower began to catch a signal that seemed to be artificial. At first, Tesla thought that the signal was coming from somewhere in the atmosphere. 
but it turned out that it had been coming from an even greater height from outer space. Tesla decided that this signal was sent by some extraterrestrial life. However, the scientific community ignored his theory. Although they respected Tesla's genius, they still considered him to be a weirdo. But a few years later, Tesla's reports were confirmed. The inventor of the wireless radio, Guglielmo Marcani, intercepted similar signals. Then in 1927, Norwegian radio engineer Georgian Holz noticed something unusual. When he sent signals at a certain wavelength, they were sent back to him a few seconds later. At first, he thought it could be an ordinary radio echo. It's not uncommon for short radio waves to bounce between Earth and the stratosphere. This phenomenon is called propagation. But usually it happens very quickly, in about one seventh of a second after the original transmission. However, the signals that Holz received took about 15 seconds to get back. They also didn't match the radio echo people were used to. The engineer wasn't the only one to witness this phenomenon. Many radio enthusiasts discovered and confirmed these signals, but no one found any explanation. So what was it? Could Tesla have been right this whole time? Let's unpack this. First of all, the signals did exist, and they've been documented by many people. However, Tesla and Macron's signals and Hall's echoes are completely different things. In reality, Tesla and Macron cut signals coming from pulsars. Pulsars are rapidly rotating neutron stars. Those get born when stars greater than our sun finish their life cycle. After that, they become neutron stars and receive such a strong impulse that they begin to rotate at an insane speed. At the same time, the radio waves pulsars emit reach very far, as far as our planet. Pulsars were discovered only in 1968, so it's not surprising that Tesla and Macroni couldn't explain the data they had received. But what about Jordan Hulls? What he discovered is now known as LDEs, or Long Delayed Echoes. It's a more complicated concept because, to be honest, these echoes still remain a mystery. Scientists suggest that LDEs may be caused by something in Earth's atmosphere, or they might be reflected from the Sun's plasma clouds or even from the Moon. Unfortunately, we don't know the truth yet. The next incident took place in 1960. The New York Times published an article which said an unidentified silent satellite has been discovered circling Earth in a near-polar orbit by United States tracking stations. The identity and origin of the mysterious satellite, which has been dubbed the Dark Satellite, are unknown despite nearly two weeks of tracking. Many people believe that this must be the famous Black Knight satellite. However, later scientists confirmed that it was actually the remnants of a regular satellite that had gone astray. It malfunctioned and the thrusters sent it in the wrong direction, they claimed. Anyway, this old story led to renewed interest in the Black Knight satellite. Astronomers all over the world started claiming to have observed it. Almost any strange celestial object could become the famous dark spaceship. But up to this point, all the photos and data about the Black Knight satellite have come from observatories on Earth. To prove or disprove its existence, people needed some witnesses in orbit. Gordon Cooper was a pilot and one of the first astronauts in human history. In 1963, he took part in the longest American space mission at that time, Mercury Atlas 9. During the flight, he discovered some strange green object, possibly of extraterrestrial origin, in front of his module. He then told his crew on Earth about that. NBC News picked up on the news and tried to interview Cooper about it. But strangely, neither NASA's mission transcripts nor Cooper seemed to give much importance to this fact, as if that didn't happen at all. Later, the official NASA's explanation was that there was an electronic malfunction on Cooper's craft. It led to increased levels of carbon dioxide, which in turn caused Cooper to hallucinate. Cooper agreed with this version. Maybe it's just a curious coincidence that when he retired, he became interested in searching for extraterrestrial life. But even if we assume that all this is true and there is some mysterious spaceship in Earth's orbit, what do they want from us? Why would they be watching us? In 1973, Duncan Alasdair Lunan, a Scottish researcher, decided to investigate this. He gathered all the data on LDEs collected by Norwegian scientists and began to study it. 
Suddenly, he noticed some deviations that could hide a code. He arranged the data into a graph, where one axis meant the delay in time between the echoes, and the other – the position of the echo in the sequence. It turned out to be a collection of dots, which looked like some sort of space map, namely the map of the constellation Bortis. Lunan began to analyze the echoes recorded by French astronomers in 1929. Again, he got the same constellation, but one of the stars was in a slightly different place. Lunan then thought, what if it's actually a star map from the past? After rewinding the time, Lunan finally got the whole picture. He discovered that this was how the constellation looked 13,000 years ago, which probably meant that they could have been watching us for thousands of years. In 1973, Lunan gave an interview to the British magazine Spacefile. He said that he had deciphered the radio message hidden in the LDEs. Here is what it said. Start here. Our home is Ypsilon Bootis, which is a double star. We live on the sixth planet of seven coming from the Sun, which is the larger of the two. Our sixth planet has one moon. Our fourth planet has three. Our first and third planets each have one. Our probe is in the position of Arcturus, known in our maps. Ugh, goosebumps. But even though these reports were published in the New York Times, Time and other well-known magazines, no one really took this topic seriously. Unfortunately, Lunan's theory wasn't really backed up by any evidence. Later, he withdrew it himself, saying that he had made obvious mistakes and that his methods had been unscientific. According to him, he had just been making guesses about what these signals might mean. And finally, the last part of our story. This photo. On the 4th of December 1998, the Endeavour spacecraft embarked on the STS-88 mission. This was the first mission to the International Space Station. And then, on the 11th of December, NASA took and published a series of images where you could clearly see an unusual object in Earth's orbit. These photos were immediately picked up by the public. Everyone thought it was the Black Knight satellite, which had been discussed for years. Had it finally been found after 100 years of speculation? But as usual, the truth turned out to be much more boring. During the mission, one of the astronauts was installing a thermal cover, but the coating was poorly fixed. It broke off and flew away. The photos were taken just to document this event. The Black Knight is a very interesting legend. You can dig into it for hours, looking for new information and evidence, and then watch it getting debunked. This story is a pile-up of many completely unrelated stories, reports, photos of real satellites, and so on. All this was mixed into one incoherent, illogical urban legend. Illogical, but very fascinating indeed. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.